Well, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the on-demand content. I know I certainly did. For anyone who's just joined, I'm Georgie Barrett and I'm your host for Big Bang Digital today. Now, there are loads of ways for you to get involved. So make sure you take part in the polls that we're running, post about the event on social and have a little look at Big Bang Explore where you can do our Meet the Future You quiz and be in with a chance of winning Amazon vouchers. Now, though, it's time for the panel version of Meet the Future You. Your chance to find out more about careers that use STEM to build a brighter future. In the hot seats, we have Corgan Farmer from OpenReach, Georgia Thompson, a design delivery manager from Bam Nuttall, Kellyanne Savage, a trainee biomedical scientist from John Radcliffe Hospital, Zachary Cater, a mechanical engineer in medical technologies at Cambridge Consultancy. Grace Roche, an operations development manager from Govia Thameslink Railway and is also a member of the Institute of Railway Operators. Andrea Avramescu, PhD researcher in decision sciences from Alan Turing. And who better to ask the questions than none other, Fayon Dixon. Thank you so much, Georgie. I'm super excited to be here. I love Meet the Future You. This is your opportunity to find out about the professionals doing the jobs that you could be going for in the future. I mean, we don't know what the future holds, so learn as much as you can, be curious and stay in STEM because there are so much opportunities out there for you. So very excited to see you all. Good morning, how are you doing? Good morning. How are you? Yeah, great, 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 great. So lovely to see you. So we've got loads of questions to get through. So let's kick off with Georgia. Georgia, what does a design delivery manager do? Well, in like quickly, <laughs> you're basically responsible from getting a concept design of a bridge, for example, from an idea to a piece of paper to implementation. So I'm involved in every single part of the process, making sure that the designers are doing, you know, a good job, making sure they're on time, making sure they're thinking about how we're actually going to build the thing. And then throughout to kind of construction support. So once we actually get on site, making sure that any issues technically um, I'm able to kind of support that brain brain no like problem solve and any kind of issues we kind of all get together my responsibility is make basically to make sure that whole process is seamless so when we get to site we're just building um and there's kind of in in theory no issues wow that is a huge responsibility and are you pretty organized in your own life anyway uh yeah i plan <laughs> literally everything i've got a spreadsheet for my plants <laughs> when I've watered them, when I did the fertiliser. So <laughs> this job fits me pretty well. Fantastic, fantastic. And can I ask Kellyanne, what is a biomedical student? Um, so, because um, I work in microbiology, so if you have, if you're not very well and you go to your GP, they might take a sample and then it comes to us and we can use, use different methods to figure out what's in it and what treatments you might need to make you better. Oh, that sounds wonderful. Is it something I've always been interested in, that kind of field, since we're very young? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's great, that's great. And, um, and uh, Zachary, now, Zachary, you and I actually met at an event a couple of years ago. Great to see you again. Good to see you too. How really, are you doing? Really good to see you. So you're a medical engineer. Do you have to go to university to become one? No. You don't. So, what was your route as, then? So, I did go through university, but I know people who have done degree apprenticeships through some companies who specialize in medical equipment and medical manufacture, and they have gone through a slightly different route to university. So, as long as you study STEM and have a strong interest, there are various ways you can get into medical engineering and develop medical devices. Fantastic. Thank you for that. And Andrea, what is decision science? Hello, everyone. 
Decision sciences is basically the, um, the field that looks at understanding how we can best make decisions, either with the help of algorithms, computers, or by simply adjusting our understanding of, of, about life. So personally, I am doing decision sciences in healthcare and supply chain, and I'm looking to see how we can best optimize currently the way uh, personalized pharmaceuticals are delivered and manufactured worldwide. So do you think that in the future, eventually, will be a, you know, AI will eventually be able to have independent thought? No, I don't think so, because any AI algorithm is built by humans. So the AI is as good as the human that, uh, that built it. So I don't think an AI should or can be um, can make decisions by itself. Of course, they are getting better and better, but I think the human uh, is really important. The person that needs to use the algorithm to make the decision is the vital piece in there as well. Yeah, I feel we're pretty <laughs> vital still. <laughs> Thank you for that. Hello, Grace. Hi, Fiona. Hi, Grace. Grace, can you tell us, how does your job improve the running of trains? Because I've got to say, apart from planes, trains is my second most favourite way to travel. Oh, fantastic. That's really good to hear. Um, we're trying to work um, with our customers and stakeholders to make sure that uh, the passenger experience is being improved continuously. Um, sorry, could you just repeat the question for me? Yeah, of course I can. So we are basically looking at the travel. So, you know, what is the, the best way in your role? I'm just going to get the question again so I can get the exact words for you. So our question... Can you just, there we go. So how does your job improve the running of trains? Okay, so really good question. So my job heavily is involved with um, operational development and how we can seek to improve the railway. And um, so one of the ways in which we're doing that at the moment is the Gatwick station um, redevelopment program. So my job is to liaise with Network Rail who are actually responsible for doing the work with our contractors. And then I manage the daily operations of how that would impact our drivers, such as stopping positions and any work that could be related to that. And I try and minimise any impact to our passengers and make sure any work that is taking place doesn't um, have an impact on our service and how we can maximise our running. Absolutely incredible. Like I said, I use the trains a lot and it's a comfort to hear that's what you're doing. <laughs> um, Georgia, we're going to look at advice now. What kind of advice would you give to a young person who's looking for a career in STEM? I think um, look at your strengths. So it's always kind of good to focus on what you're good at. Um, I never quite knew that I wanted to do civil engineering, but I knew that I liked science and I knew that I liked maths. So um, I just looked kind of at careers around that. And, you know, I still really like maths and it's kind of a big part of what I do. So I think it's really important to focus on what you're good at, focus on what you enjoy, but also keep your options open. So if you're not quite sure, don't necessarily specialise too early. Um, you know, I'm in civil engineering, but it's so broad in terms of the types of things you can do with engineering. So I think just keep your options open, but also focus on what you're good at and what your strengths are. Beautiful. I absolutely believe in that. Go with your heart <laughs> if you can. Follow. Do what you love and you'll never do a hard day's work. That's what I was exactly told that. when I was younger. So, Zach, I've got a question for you. Who saves more lives, medics or engineers? Well, I think that's a very hard question to answer, but I would say both people do an equal job. The engineers design the equipment that helps save the lives and the medics use the equipment and actually do the life saving. So it's a uh, bit, bit of both. Yeah, it is. It is, but good question. <laughs> now for Kellyanne, what is the most exciting part or rather rewarding project you've been on in the last year? So I don't know if you guys would have heard on the news, but here in microbiology, we've been doing the COVID-19 testing. I, so I heard a little bit about it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we get all the swabs from hospital patients and we're able to use different technologies to, to test for three different genes to see if you have COVID. Wow, you've been very, very busy and... <laughs> you know thank you for all the work that you're doing i mean it is something that's constant in our lives right now so thank you so much so um kellyanne 
has it been stressful doing your job during COVID? Yes, but I'm very lucky that we have such a team here that we're able to sort of rely on each other and it's it's actually been quite exciting. <laughs> oh, that's incredible that you can still find the excitement in a job that is so high pressured and that's what it's all about at the end of the day, isn't it? When you love it, you'll 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 just you'll just do it, won't you? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. So Georgia, can you tell me um what has been sort of the most exciting or rewarding project that you've been on in the last year? Well, I actually do bridge reconstructions for the railway. <laughs> so um, for, for Network Rail. Um, and one of the projects I think was most rewarding for me was a recent one we did over the weekend, oh, sorry, over the Easter. Um, and it was the first time that we did a new type of track fixing. So it's where we've attached the rail to the actual bridge deck and it was over a river um, and it was very tight. It was the first time we've ever done it. And it was just really um, rewarding for me to be part of a process. And, you know, it took a lot of effort, a lot of time, and it was a long time in the making, but we were able to do a first, which will be more efficient for the passengers. It's quicker. At the moment, there was a temporary speed restriction of like 20 miles an hour. We're now able to increase that to 80 miles an hour. And it was just such a, um, it was my first kind of innovative thing that we've done. And, you know, being a part of that and being a part of the team, we handed back the track early and just seeing all the hard work that went into it. And it was such beautiful weather that day as well. Um, that was probably the most rewarding thing for me. It sounds awesome. Wow, thank you. And Zachary, just talking about COVID for a moment again, um, were you actually involved in the UK government ventilator challenge during the COVID? Yes, so we were involved in that uh, before the pandemic uh, restrictions actually started. So that was a long seven weeks, but we had a ventilator that was... Uh, very much ready to go. Um, but fortunately, the UK government was able to buy enough off the shelf. So our emergency design wasn't needed to be used. Wow, wow. Thank you so much. Thank you all for your questions that are coming in. They're absolutely super. I've got a question for Andrea now. How did you get your role? So, PhD is pretty much a way to become an academic academic so I went to university I finished my bachelor and I finished my master's and then I applied for a PhD. For the PhD usually you have to write a research proposal to talk to some uh, teachers to supervisors and then decide whether you you want to do that research for three years or not so it's a pretty pretty straightforward way to get into a PhD if you are in university. You can also do a PhD in, in industry and that's um, that as well you have to write a research proposal and find a research topic that you are really interested about and then do some research. Mm, mm. Yeah. Thank you so much. And to Grace, I mean, we all have challenges. So what is the most challenging part of your job? Um, I think one of the most challenging parts of my job is because my job is a lot of developing and, and trying to make areas and stations better. Um, a lot of that relies on passenger downtime um, and trains not running. So it's trying to optimise what we can do in a very short space of time um, and trying to deal with all the restrictions around us putting in new platforms and taking trains out of service and trying to weigh up not impacting our passengers or disrupting them, but trying to actually get the work done at the same time is probably one of the most challenging things I have to deal with within my role. Gosh, but you, you do it, you get up every morning, it's like, right, new challenge. But that must keep yeah. things exciting though, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. And I think one of the ways, um, especially in rail, we're trying to look at new ways to do things um, and continuously improve. Um, and that's one, it's really exciting. And I think one of the key things for me to take away is that although it is really challenging, it's really good when you can come up with a solution and you can be part of that process mm, and challenging a really, you know, conventions and ideas. Yeah, that's fantastic. And for anybody that's watching, you know, Meet the Future You, it's all about finding, you know, what goes on behind the scenes. But when you're at school and when you're at your age, it's like, well, how do I get from here being at school to those roles so a great question for Andrea is what subjects would you recommend taking to do your role 
pretty much anything because it depends what you're most interested about and depends what you want to do research in. So my background is quite interdisciplinary. I do have my, my initial background was in social sciences and then in data science, and now I'm doing research in decision sciences. It's really important to know what you like and to know what you're good at. And then it's, it's never that you cannot change something or you cannot learn new things because to a PhD, most of my, my job includes learning new things and learning a new subject altogether. So depends if you want to do a PhD in mathematics, of course, you need to do something related to mathematics. If you want to do a PhD in AI, maybe a background in, in computer science would be helpful as well. But if you want to do an interdisciplinary PhD, then pretty much anything as long as you, you have a passion for that subject and you are willing to learn new things. And that's the beautiful thing about STEM. If you're interested in something, there's a job for you. <laughs> it's as simple as that, isn't that? To go for what you love. So a question for Kellyanne now. What is the hardest part of your job and why? The hardest part is probably knowing that you have a patient at the end of these samples. And sometimes there are time restrictions, but you want to do the best that you can for that patient. Um, so it's getting it all done, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's the kind of the medical side with the human side as well. It's just bringing those together and time is always an issue, isn't it? Yeah. So, Zachary, can I ask you, what is the hardest part? Excuse me, what is the favourite medical device you've ever worked on? Let's go for that. Um, I think my favourite medical device that I've ever worked on is a camera that is smaller than the size of a pencil lead to go inside your veins. Um, so that was a new product um, and that was something that uh, has had some good successes and is possibly revolutionising some of the camera technology. That's just incredible, absolutely amazing. And how lucky are you to be able to use something like that? Pretty lucky. Yeah. Um, so we'll see where it goes. <laughs> this is it, guys. If you want to be at the forefront of technology, this is this is the uh, place to be. Georgia, can you tell me what do you love most about your job? Uh, definitely the people. So um, where I'm kind of in between design, our client and our contractors, um, or as like subcontractors, like everything we do is all about people. So even the engineering that we do, at the end of it, people are going to use it. So it's, you get so many different types of people, different personalities, and I really just enjoy being able to kind of learn from different types of people. So that's probably my favourite part of my job. People, people, people. At the end of the day, you've got to rub along, you know. And even sometimes, maybe you don't see eye to eye with a certain person, but it's finding that common ground, isn't it? Yeah, not everyone's nice, um, but you still have to work with them. So it's it's it's, it's about trying to adapt and also um, attracting yourself to the goal. So, you know, you might have to work with someone that you don't really like, but at the end of the day, we are working towards something that we both need to achieve and that's what we need to kind of uh, align Remember. with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And then it's, all, it's always good to kind of say, OK, I'm not going to work with that type of person again. And it's also good to kind of be able to learn types of people and try and look for the good in them and then maybe just don't work with them again if you can. <laughs> mm. That's what it's all about. Go for the goal, have that mutual sort of, we're exactly. doing this together, personalities aside. That's right. fantastic advice, thank you. Um, back to Zachary. Oh, actually, no, just one second, Zachary. I'm gonna ask the same question to Andrea. What do you love most about your job? I love most about my job is probably what's the most challenging aspect as well. It's that you learn a new thing every day. There is not one day is the same as the other. You can teach and then you need to, to learn um, more about that subject as well. So I love that I can I have the opportunity to study even though I am I'm working and doing research. I say this to young people all the time. You know, you've got 100 billion neurons in your brain. Your brain is like a supercomputer. So, you know, never limit yourself on what you think you can or cannot learn. Just have, have an interest, be curious. And, you know, who knows where it could take you? <laughs> Thank you. So, Zachary, the question um, I wanted to ask you was, um, Christian Eriksson now has a machine actually inside the body. Is that going to be more normal in the future? 
I think looking forward, it will be more normal for people who have various medical conditions who need machines inside their bodies uh, for this to happen. Um, so there are more and more uh, bits of technology coming out uh, that help people live longer and more healthily uh, so that they can lead more normal lives, even if they have a medical condition. Could you give me an example for the young people out there? Because when I think of a machine for the body, I think about my cousin who's got a pacemaker, for instance, that assists his heart. What else would there be for an example? Sure. So some people with diabetes, they may need to manage their insulin. So the amount of sugar in their body, put simply. And you can get some machines that are con called continuous glucose monitors. So they are very small, discrete machines that go on the side of the body that can help continually monitor the amount of sugar in your body. Oh. And if you need a little bit more, it injects something called insulin into the body um, and it can keep on top of this so you don't need to worry about this. Amazing. Absolutely incredible. <sighs> It just, it just brings joy to me. It brings absolute joy to know that these technologies are helping to improve people's lives. It's great. And Grace, what does a normal day look like for you? Um, it's, it's very varied for me, actually. Um, one day is never the same, which is really exciting, and I enjoy that about my job. Um, and I think if anyone has the opportunity to do that within their role, um, they should. For example, yesterday I was out at Horsham all day um, looking at the blockade work that we'll be taking there in August. And then I was back in the office on calls um, and visiting depots, our drivers, getting out and about on the network. I'm really lucky at GTR. We cover, we're cover the biggest train operator, so we cover a huge area. Personally, I'm responsible for um, Sussex and Kent, which is a beautiful part of the world. So whenever I can get out, I try and take the long route to, to take the scenic route and see what we're doing on the patch. Oh, my husband's from Sussex and we spend a lot of time out there. It's a beautiful place. Don't get me talking about Sussex now. We'll never get off the call. <laughs> <laughs> so, Andrea, can you tell me what was your favourite subject at school and why was that? Yeah, I will have a quiet, weird answer because I don't think I ever had one favourite subject. I think that's why my, my PhD is interdisciplinary. My background is interdisciplinary as well. I think I love a little bit uh, of everything. I was really, really curious to, to learn new things, to see how things work. So I loved everything from uh, sociology, psychology, to, to mathematics, to computer science as well. So it was a little bit of everything, I, I would say. And that's great because that, that broadness of, of love and interest has just taken you onto the path that you are now where nothing is ever going to be the same each day, each moment. And your curiosity just keeps on getting better and better, doesn't it? How lucky are you? But that could be you too. So let's find out about Georgia's hardest part of her job and why. Oh, uh... <laughs> I think the hardest part of my job is well I think I think it's basically being able to to deal with the problems so sometimes um in terms of kind of the engineering and technical elements of it um similar my job is very interdisciplinary as well so there's kind of the civil aspect um kind of the bridge element and then there's more the electrical side when we're talking about high voltage low voltage cables signaling and cables on the network and trying to understand not only my discipline but all the others at the same time and how they all interrelate to what I'm doing sometimes my mind like starts to spin <laughs> so I'm like uh, okay but every day is a school day it's all about learning and you know if I don't know something I'll, I can ask um, you know there's always someone to ask there's always someone that's kind of more knowledgeable um, and it's just for me about just take sometimes just pausing and saying you know I don't understand this let me just stop for a bit um, try and get my head around it but I find it frustrating because, you know, I really want to get on and I want to solve the problem. So I'm like, OK, let's like try to solve it. But sometimes my mind needs time to catch up. So that's probably the hardest part of my role. But then also it's really good because I'm always learning something. 
And that importance of putting your hand up and asking a question is everything. You know, it doesn't matter what the person next to you is saying or thinks about you. If you need to know the answer, pop that hand up and ask the question. Otherwise, how are you going to know the answer? Exactly. So for Kellyanne, if there is such a thing as a normal day for you, what would it look like? Um, there isn't really a normal day. <laughs> we do different things every day. But um, you might be on like what we call a different bench each day. So you might be on, um, you might be looking at urine samples one day. You might be looking at stool samples another day and um, growing them on agar plates and incubating them. And then the next day you might be sort of using numerous different methods to find out what that bacteria is. And then you go on to looking at antibiotics that might be resistant to those things and yeah, there isn't really a typical day, I don't think. <laughs> Gosh. So, what did you do today? Well, <laughs> there was a little bit of wee, there was a little bit of poo. <laughs> it was a great day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Grace, can I ask you about the people who have inspired you? So, are there any people in STEM that kind of stand out for you as inspiration? Um, I think for me... Most of my inspiration actually comes from my team that I work with at the moment. Uh, nobody sort of of the wider um, group, but um, yeah, in my team, I was very lucky that I, I had a mentor. He'd done 50 years on the railway, actually, sorry, 52 years on the railway before he retired last year. And sort of the inspiration from him is, you know, continue to challenge yourself, continue to push yourself, um, think about what you want, how you're going to get there. Um, and, and breathe, broaden your knowledge as possible, which for me is more of an internal inspiration, but I, I'm taking that forward in my role. Yeah, and you know, the broader your thinking, the more options you end up having, the more people you meet, the more inspiration that you can find. It's, it's better for everyone, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. And that's one thing I would say to especially people thinking about what they want to do, try and broaden what you want to do, sorry, broaden your thinking because... You know, I think when I was at school, I sort of had it in my head that I wanted to do X, Y, Z. And then as I as I got older, I done my university time and then started my career. My career has changed uh, several times in the last sort of, 12 years. Um, and there's no right or wrong answer of how to do it. Just keep pushing yourself. Yeah. Keep your mind open, you know, Absolutely. work as hard as you can. Give yourself options. Keep that mind open. Yeah. So, Andrea now, somebody sent a question that I actually want to know the answer to as well. Is Alexa spying on us? I am not allowed to say. <laughs> I actually don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I, I don't think so. I have two Alexas at home, so I will ask them when I get home. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> more than that. <laughs> Zachary, can I ask you now, um, how has COVID affected your work life? So I think, if anything, it's made my work life even busier. Um, we have, in addition to the ventilator projects, been supporting various COVID testing um, projects as well. Um, so I can't say too much about that. But at the moment, there's real demand for medical equipment and making sure that it's appropriate for use. Um, so it's been interesting and it sort of made it um, even more enjoyable I think um, because there's the added uh, time constraints with projects um, and it's sort of really making people think um, out the box in coming up with solutions for various uh, equipment designs. Thank you and Grace can you tell me what is the fastest train in the UK and could it beat a Japanese bullet train? Um. I actually don't know the answer to that one. I have a feeling it might be the Azuma, but I'm happy to be uh, corrected on that. Um, I, no, I don't think it probably could compete with the uh, bullet train, to be honest with you, because given the services we run, uh, that determines a lot of our running times, and I don't think it would. It's a cracking question, though, isn't it? <laughs> it's, Maybe... <laughs> it's a very good one that I will take away and come back with. <laughs> watch this space thank you all so much for taking part in meet the future it's been lovely to meet you thank you for all the work that you're doing and i know our young people out there have really appreciated your time as well 
Is that not just the coolest cross-section of jobs? Oh my goodness, I just want to leap in there and I, I want to be in there. It's I'm, not too late. And can I just take a moment and say that Zachary's actually created a camera that can fit in your, inside your veins. I mean, think of the technology that goes on in a camera bonkers. and that can now be inside your veins. That genuinely blows my mind. Absolutely bonkers. Well, uh, thank you so much. Well, Faye on, on the panel, thank you so much. That was really, really fascinating hearing all your insights. And don't forget, you can discover more of the amazing careers in engineering in the Meet the Future You quiz in Big Bang and Explore, which you'll find at mtfy.org.uk. And you never know, we might be seeing you right here on the Big Bang Digital in the future.